Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Khan Nguyen. I'm an aesthetic plastic surgeon and chief medical officer of AVA Plastic Surgery and Reconstructive Surgery Hospital here in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. My specialty is in-body contouring surgery and I have this lovely patient here today to help me demonstrate to you how to use the L15 Clarius handheld ultrasound in the assessing of the abdominal wall in the context of body contouring surgery. So I put on a lot of gel and I tell the patient I want the patient that the gel is a little bit cold, and please bear with me. I expose the abdomen fully so I can see the pubic bones, and I can see the waistline from the right anterior axillary line to the left anterior axillary line. I start with a scalp scan on the left of the abdomen. Usually the setting that I use for this abdominal scan is the MSK setting because with these um, with this setting, I can see the skeletal muscle very clearly. And I go bộp mềm. I'm explaining to the patient that I'm seeing her rectus. If you turn go bộp là mở. Above the rectus is fat. And then you can even see, because she's very thin, we can see the intra-abdominal organs. And not that, if you sau cơ. Okay, so just a quick scan. Just scout for any abnormality. Up and below. middle of the abdomen, the linear alba, above the umbilicus, below the umbilicus, and then the right side of the abdomen. Okay, then I assess the linear semilunar line and the oblique muscles group and her waist. Okay. Nothing abnormal so far. I'm just scan the other side, the other right linear semilunar line. Oblique muscles group. And the waistline. So the clarus has this very friendly features where you can see a notch here. It's equivalent to the clarus logo on the left side of your screen so we can always be oriented okay now i'm gonna go into a detail scan of the abdominal wall and usually i start my detail scan with the left rectus which is on my right side i go from top to bottom and at the level of about 3 cm above the umbilicus i will make my measurement so with the clarius, you can turn on your voice control and you can use the voice control to aid you with your measuring. So I can, so this is 3CM above the level of the umbilicus. On the left side of the patient, I will say freeze. Free. And then I can start the measurement of the subcutaneous tissues. of the thickness of a rectus muscle. So for the rectus muscle measurement, I try to include the anterior sheath as well as the posterior sheath. Okay, and you can see that this patient doesn't have a lot of fat at this level and a very thick rectus muscle. Good. So here's also a chance for me to engage the patient and show the patient what I and she are both seeing. I asked her to breathe with her belly. And you can see the visceral moving. Okay, cái phần mà đang di chuyển này nè. Nó là ruột. À, tử. Nội tạng của em. Trên. Trên. Nội tạng là cơ. À, trên cơ dưới da là. Trên cơ dưới da là mỡ. Okay. So I'm telling her the part that is moving. Thở một tí đi. Now, breathe with your belly. The, the part that is moving is the internal organs. And anything that's above the internal organs is your rectus muscle here. Immediately above the internal organs is the rectus muscle. And above the rectus muscle is the subcutaneous tissues where the fat layers are. Okay? So, I continue my scouting downward and I look at the left rectus muscle below the umbilicus. Again, at the level of 3, 3 cm below the umbilicus on the left side, 
I do a measuring, I do my measurements again. Naturally, you will have more fat deposit in this area. Freeze. Dày hơn một chút, một cm. Nhưng mà cơ thì vẫn dày. Okay. So her rectus is the thickness is is quite uh, is quite even from top to bottom, but then her she has more fat deposit in the lower abdomen than in the upper abdomen is slightly thicker at 1 cm. Okay, so I complete my scan on the left side, then I repeat this scan for the right side. Again, at around the level of 3 cm above the umbilicus on the right side, I will freeze and do my measurement again. Huh. About the same as the other side. Unfreeze. Then we go down below the umbilicus, around 3 cm. Again, on the right side, I do the measurement. Freeze. So again, very uniformly distributed fat and um, rectus muscle thickness. And I can capture this image, capture, and then I resume my scan. Now, we turn our focus on the linear alba. And this structure is very important. The linear alba is very important because the linear alba will be abnormal in patients who have, uh, who is obese or who are postpartum. What is a linear alba? The linear alba is a space, it's a fascia between your left rectus muscle and the right rectus muscle. And again, at the level of 3 cm above the umbilicus, I can do the measurement of the linear alba. So, đây là cái đường trắng ở giữa của em này. Đường trắng, cái này là cái đường mà đường giữa mà. The linear alba is very obvious in thin individual and athletic individual. This is a line that you see in the patient, in the people with, with six, uh, six pack. This is a midline. And you, you can see a little bit of this, this midline in her, although it's not that obvious because, freeze because she had a moderate amount of fat, about 1 cm above this linear alba, so you don't see the line as well as a very thin individual. But this is also a good space, for, a good position for us to measure the width of the linear alba, which is about 11 mm, and also the thickness of a linear alba is about 3 mm. So in the upper abdomen, the linear alba is thinner than the lower abdomen. The normal measurement for the linear alba, the, the thickness of a linear alba in the upper abdomen is between 0.9 to 1.2 mm. 0.9 to 1.2 mm. The thickness of a linear alba is between 0.9 to 1.2 mm. The thickness of a linear alba is between 0.9 to 1.2 mm. The thickness of a linear alba is between 0.9 to 1.2 mm. The of a linear alba is between 0.9 to 1.2 mm. The of a linear alba is mm. And the width it's abnormal when it is more than 20 mm. Cái chiều rộng của em không có bị tắt. Của em có 11 à. Nếu mà mình trên 20 thì là bắt đầu bị tắt. So the width of the linear alba in the upper abdomen, if it's above 20 mm, it is considered abnormal. And that is a, a definition of diastasis recti, which is a separation of a rectus muscle. Unfreeze. So we can go down into the lower abdomen. And you can see in the lower abdomen, the linear alba is even thicker for her. And in, in, in normal patients, the average thickness in the lower abdomen is between um, 1.9 mm to about 2.4 mm. But this patient is more than that. Freeze. Her linear alba in the midline is very, very thick. Almost, almost 4 mm. We didn't want that. Almost 5 mm. When you scan all the way down here, near her, near her pubic bone, you can actually see a muscle called the pyramidalis. This is a very small muscle group at the very end of a linear alba. You can see this muscle in the midline here. Okay, 
So the patient doesn't have any diastasis recti, has very good muscle tone, very little fat. Now another part to assess is a linear semilunar line, which is I start on the left side and freeze. So cái đường này đường 11 của em nè, đường 11 là nơi mà cơ ở bên ngoài, cơ xéo bên ngoài nó gặp với cơ dưới. The linear uh, semilunar line is where the oblique muscle group meets with the rectus abdominis. And it's shown on the ultrasound here. You can see the rectus abdominis on the left and the oblique muscle group on the right, starting with the external oblique. The internal oblique is the thickest one, and then the transversus abdominis. And the transversus abdominis becoming the posterior sheath of the rectus abdominis. You can see it turning into that sh thickened sheath over here. It's a very beautiful anatomy. And we can also measure the thickness of the fat layer on top of a linear semilunar line because this will tell you whether the patient has any fat there for you to scope. You want to scope this area very well so that the patients can show off their linear semilunar line. Okay, unfreeze. And you can see as I go down on the abdomen, the, the subcutaneous tissues above the linear semilunar line thicken. So just now it was 5 mm and now it's become almost double, 11 mm. And because of the linear similar line thickness in the lower abdomen, you, her line, her linear similar line is not apparent in her lower abdomen. And I will ask the patient if she wants this to extend downward or she just wanted to limit it in the upper abdomen. So this information is really useful in my surgical planning as well. Em muốn đường 11 của em thẳng dài xuống dưới không? Hay là em thích chút cái này thôi? Xuống dưới luôn. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's why she's here because she wants her linear semilunar line extend all the way downward. So we call this in a female uh, a high definition um, liposuction because we need to create the line all the way downwards. In moderate definitions, the line can stop around the umbilicus level, which she already has. So we can repeat the scan on the other side. And you can immediately see that in the upper abdomen, there are more subcutaneous tissues above the right linear semilunar line. So her left line is clearer than the right line because on the left, there's less subcutaneous tissues above the lines. And then as we go down, so this subcutaneous tissues here has, is, is is hiding a linear semilunar line. Okay, so it's our job to expose it later on. Okay. So I have completed the abdominal scan for this patient and it has given me and the patients a better understanding of her anatomy. And I can also understand her expectations and her wishes better in terms of how she wants the definition of her abdominal wall to be.